everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for attending this special event and thank you, David, for uh, putting together this amazing day of trading psychology. So refreshing uh, that a lot of the traders uh, spoke today about trading psychology and uh, uh, I will talk today about trading psychology from the lens of a 20 plus year pro trader. So for those of you that do not know me, my name is Anka Metcalf. I am a professional independent trader that is focused uh, on day trading futures and swing trading futures. When I day trade futures, I focus in the first two hours in the morning at the New York trading session open and I swing trade equities. I have been doing this professionally for the last 17 years. Prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. I also specialize in high velocity trading and also uh, the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system. The reason I'm the designer is because I did not invent technical analysis. Uh, it's just that I have adapted an institutional system uh, to my retail account because I had to do a lot of adaptation before I can trade my own money. My system is simple yet complex at the same time. It's very easy to implement, but you need to be aware of all the elements before you execute a trade. My system is based on price support and resistance, but I focus on eight layers of price support resistance and I focus on confluence areas. The more support levels or resistance levels collide into this a specific location, uh, the better the chances for the trade to hook into that spot and rotate, whether up or down, depending on the trend. I'm also a trend trader, which uh, means that I focus on major trends and I trade in the direction of institutional money. I also have developed specific trigger times throughout the New York trading session. And I do follow these trigger times along with, with the support resistance areas that are present on my charts. So I need to have at least two of these elements line up on my chart before I execute the trade. There are not many trigger times for the New York trading session. And in fact, there are only three or four trigger times if you would like to trade the New York trading session and especially the first three hours. I also focus on specific price zones. Now these are four specific price zones where institutional traders look to scale in or initiate positions. These are determined by price alone and they have fixed price values. I also focus on chart synchronicity and divergency. Not all the indices or the markets are in sync at the same time and sometimes these market become divergent. Now divergent markets are a little bit more difficult to trade because they are going to uh, create a, a follow the leader kind of effect. I also apply a strict set of trading rules and a 10 point scoring system that enables myself and my traders to identify trades with these. We were very happy to be a um, nominated at the Benzinga Global FinTech Awards a couple of weeks ago. So Trade Out Loud was nominated for Outstanding Performance and Best Financial Literacy Tool. For those of you that do not know who Trade Out Loud is or, or what we offer, you can find our services and uh, our education at tradeoutloud.com. Our website is uh, actually going on, uh, it's under maintenance <laughs> right now, and we will be launching a new website. The current website that we have on right now is actually 10 years long, and it's really high time for a makeover. If you guys wanna follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, or YouTube, or LinkedIn, our handle is Trade Out Loud. I do post a lot of information on Twitter, whether you're a swing trader, or a day trader, or a futures trader. Tonight, I will be talking about 10 ingredients that impact your trading and can potentially increase your profits. First of all, we're gonna talk about developing a winning mindset. Now, just a little disclaimer, I am not a trading psychologist nor a performance coach. This is my pure vision 
about trading psychology and what has helped me throughout my entire career of 20 plus years in the market. One thing that you need to know, especially if you're at the beginning of your trading career, is that trading is not gambling. Trading is assuming a calculated risk and is trading by strict trading plan and it's a profession just like any other profession out there that requires a lot of education and a lot of practice. Number, no, actually number three, the success of the trade can only be considered only if you take into consideration the risk. So the risk of the trade is very important when it comes to trading. So what do I mean by that? What if I came here in today and what if I told you that today I took a trade and I made $5,000. Would you consider me a good trader? Um, after all, I made $5,000 today on a, in a choppy market environment. So I want you guys to participate a little bit uh, and just let me know, do you think I'm a great trader or a good trader or I had a good day if I tell you right now that I made $5,000 today? Type a one in the room if you consider that I'm really a good trader, okay? now. For those of you that have answered with no, and some of them have answered with yes, 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 uh, I would like to ask you why. Can you give me a little bit of description on why? Like, yeah, a good day is $5,000, but for those of you that have answered no, what is the element that I left, that I left out, that I did not communicate with you? Do you guys know? Exactly. Exactly, it depends on the risk. So what if I told you, for those of you that have answered yes, uh, that, and, and of course that is, you know, a, let's say a, a good day, right? $5,000 is a good day. But what if I told you that I've risked, let's say $10,000 to make that $5,000? That's not such a good trade after all, right? Because definitely, and of course this is debatable on the market environment as well because even though the risk to reward ratio is really great written on paper, when you're actually trading in the market, you're going to see that is totally different. And especially now that we're trading within this pandemic environment, the environment is totally, totally, totally different than what it was last year, than what it was in January, or even what it was back in February. So it's a totally different market environment. And you see that the movements in the market are very violent, violent up, violent down. So the market doesn't have the patience to wait for a nice and steady pullback. The market just executes the pullback that otherwise would be probably in, um, uh, probably executed in, I don't know, three to four days or maybe five days. Everything must happen in a day or two days. So you are seeing the gradual move up and then sharp move down, retest of some balance into a confluence zone, and then straight back up. So when you're trading an environment like this, your risk is always going to be asymmetric. Volatile markets are always asymmetric. And sometimes the risk to reward ratio is not the one that you would expect. Of course, it's great. And when you're having a trading market, if you, have been, you would have been trading the 2010, 11, 12, 13, 15, and so on, uh, not 15 and so on, but into that, uh, into that space, that was the QE era. That was a massive, massive trend, no volatility, and the market just pushed higher. But since 2018, the environment has changed dramatically. We had the first um, impulse of volatility that came into the market in 2018 in, in February and beginning actually of February. And then we, ex we, and then into the end of the year, into 2018, we had a total chop in October, November, and December. Now, for those of you that are thinking risk to reward, imagine trading those three months where Historically speaking, the market should be heading higher. So usually the third quarter is the quarter where the market, where you're having more market participation, you're having more volume in the market. The most volume in the market is actually in the last three quarters, in the last, I'm sorry, in the last three months. Uh, so you can expect a lot of market volatility and continuation action. Well, that was not the case in 2018. 
And uh, in 2019, it was a totally different story. So again, you have to adapt your risk to reward and you have to be hands-on on each and every single market environment and market context. Now, I wanna prove to you that trading is not gambling. And I know there are a lot of traders that, uh, okay, so I have a question here. Uh, Mark is asking, please define asymmetric, uh, asymmetric, uh, asymmetric trading. Asymmetric risk is when you, uh, when your uh, when you, the difference between the entry and the stop uh, is wider than the target zone, than the reward zone. So let's say you you want to get Apple, I don't know, or you want to get any stock. Let's say stock ABC. You want to get it at a hundred dollars. You have a stop. Let's say you have I don't know, maybe a five dollar stop, and your stop is um, um, below right into a support zone or whatever your calculation is, and then you have your target that is into let's say it's a dollar away. So if you're having resistance that is a dollar away, the price is not going to accelerate into the target two, three, and four because it's going to have a major obstacle into that target one. Okay, so I hope that helped. So let me give you an example that happened today. Today we had this news that came out and I found it very relevant to post it here. So let's say Fox Business came out. This is from Financial Juice on Twitter. So Fox Business came out uh, with a tweet saying that TikTok officials believe that they are now convincing some of the hardliners in the administration to approve Oracle deal, including the US SEC, uh, of state, uh, um, um, U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo, etc. So basically, there's a lot of good news that is around Oracle right now. So I just put the chart right here. Right after the news came out, the price started to go up because people react based on what they hear. Water cooler discussions. Now, this is not a technical pattern. This is just pure gambling on a conviction that Oracle deal is going to go through and the stock price obviously is gonna start moving up. Typically, I stay away from this kind of news and I don't in particular like to trade news. There are, and news is uh, viewed in different ways and I know David has planned to do a, a full day of news and trading the VIX where I would go over, well, where I will go over how and uh, uh, um, how and what the time is, what the appropriate time is to trade such releases. Uh, but definitely trading is not gambling. So I find that any trader that chases a dream, hoping that the stock is going to go up, hoping that if you're trading futures, the index is going to go up, or if you're trading Forex, following an EC, ECB comment, hoping that the euro is going to go up or the dollar is going to go up or whatever it is. It's not laid out in a proper foundation in technical analysis. So trading is a business and it's not gambling. And it should, you should view trading uh, as a business in terms of uh, blueprint, right? What is the blueprint? Blueprint would be your trading plan, right? A plan based on which you can take really good decisions about your trading, your stock trading, your futures trading, whatever uh, trading you're doing. Uh, trading is about following rules, strategies, and planning. And of course, planning ahead, planning ahead for your trade, making a blueprint of your trade. I always make a blueprint of my trades. Um, and I'm going to give you a quick example. On Sunday, I spend about five hours scanning through over 6,000 stocks. Uh, I look at the market indices. I look at the market um, major indices, obviously. I try to select uh, which index is stronger, which is the laggard. I try to find the sector within that specific uh, index that was lagging and the one that was uh, bullish and that was leading into the index. And I try to pick the trades and I try to select, I try to select the uh, stocks that either have relative strength compared to the market, because if the market is into a strong structure, uh, my stocks will have the capability to run into targets faster. Uh, and it's not going to be like watching paint dry and they achieve targets immediately. You have that 
uh, volatility, you have that uh, price velocity that is going to advance your trades right into targets. And then again, in a weak market environment, let's say that tomorrow or in the overnight, we're going to see some more pullbacks uh, that are happening in the futures market in the overnight, like I said. And then tomorrow morning, we're gonna wake up with the gap down. Based upon that gap down in the market and based upon the levels of throughout this trading week that we have tested, we could take a decision whether the market is going to bullish or be bullish or bearish into the next week. And based on that decision, let's say if we close week, if we take out, if we take out last week's low, then I will be scanning for some stocks that have relative weakness. Scanning for stocks that have relative weakness will show me uh, that they have the capability to run lower faster than the market itself. So you want to pick smart. Um, also, trading is about discipline and professionalism. And I know there were some uh, presenters ahead of me that uh, were talking about creating a routine, about uh, you know being disciplined to wait for the trades. We're going to tap on those uh, items as well, but they, they said it really well in their presentation. And you can see that there's this common denominator that all the traders have when it comes to trading is about uh, being calm, being disciplined, being very patient, and being very calculated when it comes to trading, because after all, we're trading the most precious commodity in the world, which is money. And uh, trading is not about uh, hitting home runs on each and every single trade. And I agree, once in a while, it, uh, it feels really great, but you're going to start trading correctly. You're going to start to determine the parameters. And if you're you know, and sometimes it happens that you're in a trade and you're getting some news or an upgrade if you're trading stocks and the stocks just keep on flying or the index or there's some positive news. Remember last year we were trading all last year was all about uh, last year was all about uh, the, the trade war. Right. We got some positive news about uh, about the trade deal. The market would go up like it really didn't matter what stock you were trading all the stocks were just in sync in sync and they were going up the futures not felt uh, the future is the same so they were trading in a perfect symmetry and they were trading into um in, into this uh um really strong context uh time your mark you're saying that time is the most precious commodity uh, I don't think that time, uh, you, you get nervous when you're losing time. I don't think you're getting nervous if you're losing time. But if you would have a trade right now, and if you lose $70,000 in a trade, you would think that money is your most precious commodity and not 10 minutes that you spend in front of the computer finding that trade that lost you $70,000. Uh, just, just an example. And trading is about being honest with yourself. Okay, be very honest with yourself because when you're honest with yourself, when you document your trades, and we're going to talk about this tonight as well, it will show you where what you did good, what you did bad, where you need to improve. So we're going to circle back uh, at the end of the presentation today at uh, about, and we're going to talk more about this. Uh, trading is all about developing a winning mindset and your develop in, in one of the biggest components is to develop a daily routine. Uh, the brain loves routine and it thrives on routine actually. Uh, so whether, you know, you're trading in the morning or in the afternoon, or you're a swing trader, you have to develop some kind of routine. Trading is going to influence your lifestyle and it's going to change your lifestyle forever. It's going to organize you. It's going to make you a more disciplined person. So what do I mean by that? By creating a routine, wake up, brush your teeth, have a shower, go have breakfast, because remember, these are the most important elements in the morning when I, because I only, I only trade two and a half hours or two hours or three hours in the morning from nine to 12, I host my trading room uh, for day trading futures. Uh, I cannot afford to be in a trade and tell my traders, or even when I'm trading my account and say, hey, you know what, I'm just gonna take a quick break because uh, I need to go grab a glass of water or I need to go, you know, uh, answer the door, there's somebody at the door. No, when the when you trade, the time stops. It's only you, it's only your computer, and that's it. 
It's you in the zone with the instrument that you're trading. There are absolutely no distractions. If you're thirsty, make sure that you have a glass of water. If you're hungry, make sure that you have some snacks close by. So there is nothing that can interrupt me, not even a bathroom break. And I'm not kidding. When you're in trade and when you're uh, uh, trading size and when you're day trading, this is your ritual. So wake up, brush your teeth, have a shower, whatever you do, have breakfast and have a really good healthy breakfast. Try to get as healthy as possible. No sugars, no, you know, because when you're, eating a healthy breakfast. And by the way, sugar and coffee, you know, they are not, they're not really a great combination in the morning. I don't drink coffee at all. And you're going to find that a lot of traders do not drink coffee in the morning. Coffee is heavily di diuretic. And uh, also, you know, you can, there are different substitutes and etc. So not a great idea, but you're, you're, and by the way, and you know, it's your choice, but what I'm telling you here is that what the majority of professional traders are doing. Also, determining your term, uh, your trading times and your trading schedule, okay? What is your trading time and your trading schedule? Whether you have a job and you can only trade the afternoon or you can only trade the evening, whether you're a day trader or you're a swing trader, you have to create your trading times. Uh, the brain works best if it works in small increments, for instance, two hours uh, or three hours and then have a break. Or I, for instance, trade from nine o'clock till 12 o'clock and then I take a break for about an hour. And then I come back to the computer to monitor my swing trades, place the alarms, place, place the alerts, I'm sorry, place the alerts uh, and everything to see if I can adjust my stops. And that's it, okay? And that takes about 10 minutes, right? From two o'clock to about, let's say 2.15, let's say 10 to 15 minutes, and then I'm done. This, this is how a trading day should look like. And you should always work out a little bit because the you have to, uh, oxygen, uh, uh, you have to get some oxygen to your brain. Usually when, before I start the trading session, I go for a 30 minute walk. Okay. And then you can work out in the afternoon, whatever you want to do. But I find that when you go for a walk, you feel refreshed. Uh, also enforce discipline. Discipline is very important. You have to sit on your hands, discipline yourself, not to take any trades unless you have a pure setup that is fit in your trading plan. And you must never trade without a, a trading plan. How many of you guys in here have a trading plan? Type a one in the room. Type a one in the room. How, how many of you guys, I wanna see how many of you guys have a clean, clear trading plan that says, okay, I'm gonna trade from this hour to this hour. I am going to trade only this strategy. I'm trading, let's say a pullback buy. I'm gonna be waiting for uh, my stock or my index, whatever you're trading, uh, to pull back to the 20 simple moving average, confluence zone with the prior price action. I wanna see a rotation at this point. I wanna see it happening at 10 o'clock reversal time or at 10.30 trigger time. And then I'm going to be setting targets into prior resistance, moving averages, whatever I have, uh, whatever your plan says. And I am going to trail it based on this system. And you have to have a system. How is my reaction into uh, target one? What am I going to do at target one? What am I going to do at target two? What am I going to do at target three? So your plan needs to say, hey, at target one, because you need to keep it simple for the brain and for your sanity. And in order to trade stress-free, hey, at target one, I'm going to write it down in my trading plan. I'm going to take half of the position off because when, I t when you take half the position off, you feel more relief because you have less size. So if the trade is gonna go against you after you hit target one, uh, then you can uh, lift your stop, let's say to break even your entry price. So this way you have a risk-free trade. Do you know how, what that is gonna do to your trading? It's gonna take your trading to the next level, why? because you're gonna be trading stress-free. You have already banked some money in, into the account. And number two, for the rest of the position, you're gonna leave it active to run to, uh, to uh, let's say to target two or to target three. And you don't have to worry because all you have to worry about is management. 
Management is another topic that should be in your trading plan. How do I plan to trail? Is it going to be like, uh, uh, am I going to trail by the moving averages? Am I going to trail by pivots? What is your strategy? Am I going to trail by percentages? Am I going to chair? Uh, am I going to trail based on uh, candlesticks on the time frame that I'm trading? Or am I going to zoom in to the technical image because I want to choke the profits off because I can see that the market is changing? So all these elements need to be in your trading plan and your trading plan should be very simple, all laid out on one page. And every single day before you even start your computer, you need to have that sheet right in front of you. And that sheet should state as well, the risk per trade on every single trade, right? Am I going to risk today $200 on a trade? Am I going to risk $1,000 on a trade? And that risk that you're going to apply for each and every single trade should never vary unless your account grows with at least 20 to 30%, okay? So this is the way you should have a laid out trading plan. Uh, the other thing is that you need to have the patience to wait for the optimum time to take the trade. There's no rush. Nobody's forcing you to take the trade. Uh, I don't like traders that say, hey, I'm going to scale in here. And then if it goes against me, I'm going to add a little bit more. That is not a strategy, especially if you're at the beginning of your trading career. Uh, that is definitely going to take you a step back. Entries are entries, stops are stops, and targets are targets. You have to be sure of them when you're day trading. When you're swing trading, it's a little bit different, but you're still, you still have to follow the same guidelines. There's a place and a time when you need to scale in and scale out, but at the beginning stage of your career, at least in the first two to three years of your trading career, you should not be applying any scale in. Uh, also, plan. If you have a trading plan, you're going to have no to very little emotions. I would actually go a little bit further and say you're still going to have a little bit of emotions and you're still going to feel uh, the heat and not that much heat, but you're still going to feel the, feel the heat because guess what? You're trading money. You're trading your uh, hard earned money. Uh, and I know that a lot of traders sometimes are hesitant into pulling the triggers um, into the trades and uh, sometimes, you know, they go back and forth. They overthink it. Here's the thing with overthinking. If you're overthinking a trade, it means that you're not sure that um, the price action is right. The setup is not evident. So the brain, your brain is not um, allowing you to go ahead to execute that trade. Your brain, listen guys, trading is visual. When your brain sees the setup, your brain is gonna say, click the mouse or hit the hotkey. If it doesn't recognize the setup, it's going to start saying, mm, I'm not really sure. That's the time when you're going to say, oh, I'm, I think I'm going to scale in. The price action and the formation, the chart, uh, the chart pattern formation needs to be so evident. It needs to hit us in the head, <laughs> like literally. Okay, so let's talk about defining your strategy. And by the way, there is no strategy without education. So number one, you have to focus on the strategy and the chart and not the PNL. So what do I mean by that? A lot of time traders uh, find a good strategy. Uh, they enter the trades and uh, they absolutely follow the charts. They follow the technical on the charts. But once the trade starts, uh, you know, moving into their direction, uh, guess what? They go like, oh, uh, this is my goal for the day, or I made 200 bucks, or I made $2,000, depending on your account size and your risk level. And they go like, yes, I'm gonna take myself out here. So what they're doing basically is they're trading their p and they're, they're not trading their chart because if, and that is one of the reasons a lot of traders at the beginning stage of their career are taking premature profits. And they're leaving a lot of money on the table because they don't have a trailing system. They uh, are not used to seeing green in their PL. So that's why they're taking profits earlier. The other thing that can happen here is that, hey, you have a trade, it triggers for you, but listen, you're in the trade. It just went just a little bit up and then it came back down but it still has not violated your stop. And it's just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's just basing. 
okay? It's just basing. So what do you do when the, uh, when the price is basing? A lot of traders, just because it didn't go immediately to their target or immediately into their uh, area that they were looking for, uh, guess what? They abandon the trade. This is the worst thing that a trader can do for their trading. Once you have a pre-planned trade, here's the entry, here's the stop, here's the target, you have to let the price trade. For instance, I have been in a trade, I have been in a gold trade for the last, I don't know, maybe two weeks, for the last two weeks. And it's just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's no such thing as being bored of being in a trade and say, hey, I cannot, and by the way, I'm still not into break even. But guess what? My stop is holding. So as long as my stop is holding, I have the rule, remember, in my trading plan that I need to obey my entry, my stops, and my targets. So has my trade violated the stop? No. So why should I exit the trade? Just because I'm bored? Again, this would be PNL trading and being bored into a trade. And trust me, when you do that, the next thing that's gonna happen, boom, that's the time when it's gonna trigger and uh, it's just gonna run like wild. All right, in trading, there are no egos, okay? No egos, there's no such thing as, oh my God, I was right, I was wrong. No, trade the market in an objective way. The market is always right, <laughs> okay? And also there's no crying in trading. I know that a lot of traders are saying, oh my God, I lost again. I can feel their pain. I know that trading is tough. And let me remind you something. When I started retail trading because I came from the investing background and I started retail trading, I gave up my job and I said, hey, I wanna do day trading because I wanna day trade for my income, right? It's an income producing style of trading. You're in and out every single day. Uh, in trades. And I started with stock trading. Well, let me tell you something. The first three to four months, it was perfect. Everything was going great until, guess what? I found an indicator and I found a newsroom. That was the end of my winning streak. I was distracted. I was paying more attention to the indicator than anything else. I was paying attention. Uh, instead of looking at pure price action, I was distracted by all these squiggly lines that were going arrows in, arrows out. And then not only that, but I was, uh, I was subscribed to a newsroom, which was extremely expensive at the time. It was $700 and this was like 12, 15 years ago. Uh, and uh, I would get the news before it hit the wires or at the same time when it hit the wires and the wires had a delay of about two to three minutes before it hit TV or anything else. Well, let me tell you something, it did not work. And I incurred losses for, for about three months and it took me another three months to realize that that is just stupid that I just did because I derailed from my trading system and I should have known better, right? Because I'm coming from the investing background and I know that there's no holy grail in trading, but I thought I would simplify my process because when you're day trading stocks, it's not the easiest thing to do on the planet. It requires a lot of work. And I remember having losses because this is where, uh, you know, that, that crying from trading. I remember like I had like day after day after day after day after day after day after day losing trade, losing trade, losing trade, losing trade. No, I didn't blow up my account because I use the same risk. Like I teach everybody in my course and in my webinars, free webinars that I do to use the same risk because it's so much easier to get out of the hole. It's so much easier to recuperate the losses when you do that. But I felt like every single day when I woke up, I'm like, oh my God, no, I have to get out of bed. There's gonna be another losing day. It's like, I can't bear it anymore. Can you guys relate to that? I mean, I think that everybody went through that because you haven't found or you derailed from your system. So if you feel nervous or emotional, or if you feel that you have sweaty palms when you're trading, I know the cure for that. And I know I can pinpoint with precision why you're having that sensation. It's because you're oversized in your trade. And that is the number one reason why a lot of traders trade their p &L instead of trading their charts. You also have to have a really well thought process and a strategy that you implement every single day. So like I said, the routine is gold. So have the same process, the same strategy that you use every single day in the market. So for instance, I'm going to give you a quick example of my process. 
I turn on my computer and before I even turn on my platform, I look to collect my intel. I want to see what happened in the overnight trading session. I want to see what happened uh, with news related. Uh, I want to see what the news of the day is, um, what set of news we have, whether it is uh, unemployment numbers that are coming out at 8.30 because there's a huge batch of numbers that are coming out at 8.30. If I have news that is coming throughout the day so I know how to adapt my style so I do not get caught in trades. So it's a very well-planned process when I, uh, when I trade. So it's streamlined. I know exactly by the second everything that I do. And in fact, into the class that I teach, I give my traders a trading plan and an action plan. And the action plan lays out what you need to do. And you're going to find this funny, but yes, I teach my traders what they need to do five minutes at a time. I teach my traders what to do from nine o'clock to 9.15, from 9.15 to 9.30, from 9.30 to uh, 9.35, from 9.35 to 9.45, from 9.45 to 10 o'clock, from 10 o'clock to 10.30, from 10.30 to 11 o'clock, from 11 o'clock to 11.15. These are all sequences in the market that I just uh, that, that I just mentioned. And they needed to know what happens at every single stage. Why? Because they need to develop this routine. And it's so super easy to follow. So once I have a winning strategy, I love to give it to my traders so they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, Number three, trading mindset. So your mindset, your trading system should be a really well greased machine because your trading system. So what is your trading system is basically, there are basically three components that you see here. First of all, it's your mindset, your psychology that has to be in sync with the money management, right? How, uh, how much risk you're applying to the trade? How much, uh, how are you going to um, react into your target? And what is the plan of action that you are going to apply when you uh, have achieved target one, target two, et cetera? So how you manage your risk. And of course, the method, the strategy that you're applying. And remember that beginner traders that are here with us tonight, you, sh you guys should know that you do not need to have any sophisticated strategies and any you know, mumbo jumbo kind of, no, just keep it very basic. Look for simple strategies, a pullback buy or a sell. And remember, you can make tons of money with, only apply with applying only one strategy into the market. Uh, your mindset and uh, your mindset and your ability to control it are the most important. So you need to keep your focus and your brain in check because otherwise you're going to be scattered and all over the place. And especially when you're trading, your mind drives everything that you do in life and trading is no exception. And by the way, trading is 90% psychological and it's 10% method. So I know that a lot of traders are thinking, Hey, I need to find that perfect system or I need or close to a perfect system or I need to find that perfect strategy or the perfect trailing or whatever it is. But if you have everything and you do not have the right mindset, that's not gonna, going to go that far. So your trading should be a well greased machine. I'm going to repeat it again. Remember, it's the psychology and how you manage risk and basically your strategy. And again, your trading system. Uh, number four, uh, it's attitude. Your attitude will determine whether or not you're going to be profitable, profitable that trading day. You have to be really motivated and you have to be in the market for the right reasons. And remember that trading is not a rich, a get rich quick scheme. It's not. Uh, so if you're, you know, seeing some, um, you know, ads or whatever with traders that are on the beach and, uh, you know, trading from a phone or from the iPad, guys, I'm telling you here right now, that is just an ad. Trading is actually hard work and you have to do the homework. Do you think that if a portfolio manager or a hedge fund manager or an institutional trader, um, could trade off a phone, he wouldn't even need to go to work, right? He would just trade off of his phone from home and just report, you know, his numbers. I mean, that's pretty much it. Trading is work. And that's why when they go to work, they work like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours, whatever the schedule is. Your attitude is also uh, more important than any 
uh, of the character attributes required for successful trading. It is important to know how you react to the market and not what the market does to you. So what do I mean by that? It's important how you react to the market. Um, so basically when you're seeing an uptrend, let's say for instance, your strategy is gonna be simple and you're gonna implement any pullback buy or breakouts or doji reverse or whatever it is, you're going to start implementing your brain is going to be focused on I need to buy, I need to buy because you're seeing that pullback and reversal. And plus, look at the price pattern of uh, prior activity on the chart. If you're seeing, uh, um, you know, synchronicity, if you're seeing symmetry on the chart and pretty much the same pattern repeat itself uh, at least three, three to four times, it means that you're uh, uh, you, whatever you're trading, your index or your stock is into a trend, right? So it's trying to fo follow the trend. So trending markets are easy to follow. Choppy markets are a little bit harder, but it's about the market and how you follow the, uh, the market. It's about how you follow, it's your ability to follow the trend and not go against the trend. And let's say even if you have a loss, let's say you have a loss, you had a stop loss, it should not be devastating. And I know for some individuals it's devastating, but it should not be devastating. The reason why is because every day when you commit to the market, you allow yourself at least three to four trades. If you're a day trader, three to four trades a day, you not have to make sure that you have enough ammunition so you can hit the market, right? Because let's face it, trading is a game of odds and you have to play with very high odds. You have to play with odds of 75% or more. Because if you're playing with 50-50 odds, then there are 50% odds for you blowing that uh, trade, right? So it's, you have 50% odds of losing your money. So that's why you need to play with more odds into your favor. Losing trade. The losing trade is not the issue. The real issue is how you react to the loss because sometimes there are traders that have no idea how to position size. And I just came from a three-day uh, free workshop that I did with my traders, uh, with, with, my, uh, with my traders, yeah. And it was a free event and uh, we talked extensively about this topic. Uh, it's about using the same risk on each and every single trade. And that that is the most important thing because if one trader, and, and of course, position sizing, because one trader, um, a trader that is not educated into management, into money management, into risk management, will apply different various risks into, uh, into the trade. It's not really going to calculate the risk, the risk for every single trade. So the risk is determined by the entry and the stop and should not be constant. I know a lot of traders that are at the beginning, at the beginning say, hey, I'm going to risk $200 on this trade. They get in wherever they get in. And then when they see their PL at 200, that's when, where they stop out. So they don't have technical formations and they have no concept on how the strategy, uh, how the strategy and how the minds, uh, how the strategy and how the money management works. Um, the real issue is how you react to loss because some traders, you know, risk more. Uh, they like to, uh, let's say, um, you know, they, they don't control their risk. They don't have no management for the risk and no concept of risk. And let's say they uh, risk uh, $500 the first time around. And then again, if you have a very small account of, I don't know, maybe five to $7,000, that's, that's a pretty much considerable amount, right? It's 10%. If you have a $5,000 account or risk uh, $500, then remember that 10 times uh, in 10 trades, you can blow your account up. Uh, so if you get emotional, it means that you're taking too much heat and your percentage risk per trade is way too high. Um, if, if you change your trading style, some traders, you know, if they have a loss, uh, let's say they lose $500, the next trade that they take, they increase their risk to make up for the loss faster. That's the worst mistake that you can do. You have to go down in size or maintain the same amount. Uh, do you have your judgment clouded and switch to revenge trading, right? The, definitely there are traders that say, hey, I've got to get back into the market. They haven't even analyzed why they uh, stopped out of the trade and they want to uh, execute the trade again to, to try to take their money back. And that's never working out. Uh, or do you respect your plan, accept, accept your loss, uh, as part of the plan and move on, which is the normal thing to do. Uh, patience. Notice how I uh, spelled it here, patience, because if you're not patient, you're going to pay for that time. 
Uh, I love this quote, and this is a quote that I live by, uh, and I have always traded by. Here's a quote from Jesse Livermore. Here's what he's saying. I just wait until there is money lying in a corner, and all I have to do is go over and pick it up. I do nothing in the meantime. In essence, by not wanting to trade, I have transformed myself into a master of patience by forcing myself to wait until there was a trade that appears so compelling that I could not stand the thought of not taking it. I had vastly improved odds. Jesse Livermore, Jesse Livermore, it's a great, uh, uh, Jesse Livermore was a great trader. Um, and uh, he describes in his book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, how he made around $20 million, and that's equivalent in 2020 US dollars, within a year, uh, only to lose that and recover to make 73 million. So I highly recommend you trade it, whether you're a stock trader, futures trader, uh, forex trader, whatever, crypto trader, options trader, whatever trader you are, you need to read this book. Uh, patience is one of the key uh, qualities you need to have in order to be able to deal with different situations in trading. Uh, from the point you decide to enter the trade, how you manage the trade, and wait for the targets. You just sit, watch, and wait for the best trading opportunity to come to you. The chart is going to tell you when it's ready, and you have to wait for the chart to speak to you. You're going to understand if, you, if this doesn't sink in right now, and if you do not understand what I'm saying right now, that the chart needs to speak to you, it's going to make sense in a month or two or in a year or two. So basically you have to wait until there is a calculation. This is the wait box right here. When the market is choppy, 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 choppy. Okay, this is the time when you wait. You see the breakout, here's the trade that is definitely confirming that it's ready to progress higher. And then, uh, and then uh, we're gonna talk about confidence. What is confidence? So self-confidence is a measure of your belief in yourself and has a number of consequences in trading should you lack it. Essentially, being successful requires you to trust and follow your trading plan. So you can see that there is one common denominator over these slides, and that is trading plan, trading plan. Hello, if there's anyone out there that is trading without a trading plan, let me get this news to you. You are not going to make a trading if you do not have a plan. And trust me when I tell you this, the plan needs to be on paper because that is going to be your motivator every single day. And it's going to provide you the guidelines of what and when and how and how much you need to apply to each and every single trade. Confident traders rely on their own judgment and not what others are saying. So don't wait for water cooler discussions. Don't wait for you know some post on Twitter or don't wait for anything. Just make sure that you are the judge of your own trade. So take full responsibility for your trading decisions. Emotions. Emotions are probably the single biggest problem we face when trading along with the lack of discipline. You can limit our emotional impulse of trading by having once again, a trading plan because it takes the impulse out of your trading, right? So if you took a trade today or this week and that was boom, impulse, and you lost on a trade because all the impulse trades, every single one of them, I know they don't work. Uh, and uh, if you had a trading plan that said, hey, I got to wait, I'm only trading, let's say pullbacks that are happening this so and so and so, like I mentioned earlier, you would have seen that you would have alleviated that loss by respecting your plan. Emotional swings and emotional stress do impact your mental state and can ultimately affect your trading decisions. Don't take your dog for a walk and then you meet a neighbor and you start fighting with your neighbor about, I don't know, election signs or anything like that because when you're gonna get back to the computer, you're gonna be all pissed off and you're not going to react uh, in, uh, fairly to price action. When you trade with emotions, you do not trade logically. Trading involves the most com uh, precious commodity in the world, which is money. What I can guarantee you that it's not time and it's money. Because I can tell you right now, spend a whole day with me tomorrow, okay, for free. And then you, um, let's say, I don't know, uh, something happens and you take a bad trade and then you lose uh, $10,000, okay? That is more devastating than losing an hour here that you spend with me, okay? So it's not time. It's the money that you lose that creates pressure on yourself. Money outlasts, hate, love, greed, and anything else that you can ever imagine. 
Taking decisions. Trading successfully is about decision making. Although, because of money and your natural instincts, many people cannot remove their emotions from their tra trading decision process sufficiently. So decisions in trading and in life are um, made after planning and weighing the risk and reward. Entry stop targets, trailing and position sizing should be taken into consideration. Now, expectations. Everybody that gets into trading has totally unrealistic expectations. I teach traders how to trade and I know that they have unrealistic expectations. They, I even get emails say, hey, I'm going to start my, uh, I'm, I want to sign up for your trading room or I want to start a, a sign up for your class. How much am I going to make in the first month? I mean, literally, it's up to the market. If you're having a sideways market, newsflash, you may not make, you may not make anything. If you're having a power trend market, you're probably gonna double your account. So what makes traders think that they can start trading day one, one day, and be super profitable the next day is unrealistic. So have realistic expectations. It's very important. Set your goals and targets is most importantly. Expectations will be met only by doing your homework Holy grail. Once trader realize that there may be work involved in trading and it's perhaps not as easy as just following someone, uh, they may be in search for the holy grail. In some instances, the holy grail may be an indicator where they're gonna spin their wheels for two to three months, they're gonna ditch that and they're following the same indicator. So they're derailing. So they're derailing and they are going to delay their learning process. The reality of trading is that there's no such thing as a trading system in existence. There's no holy grail. It never has existed and it never will. Uh, and it is, it's only hard work that the trader must do each and every single day to better themselves. Fear, here's a good one. Fear is a distressing negative sensation induced by perceived threat. Can you guys guess what the threat is? Type it in the room if you know what the threat is. Uh, it is a basic survival mechanism occurring in response to specific stimulus as pain or threat of danger. I could tell you what the fear is. No, it's not the fear of missing out. It's the fear is the fear of loss. Is the fear of holding you, so what is the fear that is holding you back? Okay? Fear of failure, fear of the trade not working, fear that I have no idea what I'm doing. Or is it the consequence of fear, right? It's the consequence. It's basically the consequence of what you're thinking because you're thinking fear, but in fact, it's not the fear of trading because you can go into a simulated account and you can see how you can hit, oh my gosh, you can find a trade every th three minutes. But no, when you're trading a real account, what is your biggest fear? Oh my God, I'm going to lose money. I'm going to blow up my account. That's the biggest fear in trading. So when you fear, you project into the future the possibility that you will fail. So here's a list of feelings that you need to look out for. Number one, fear of future regret, fear of being wrong, fear of being criticized, fear of personal failure. You got to have 100% support at home for that. Many people are afraid to let themselves know they feel these things. Don't be, guys. Fear out loud. This is what I tell my traders. Fear out loud. Make a list of your fears. Confront your fears. Because once you have explicit fears, you can determine what's holding you back. Here's some suggestions. Have a trading plan. Once again, I know it's repetitive. It's just a repetition. Trading plan, trading plan, trading plan. That spells out your strategies on every single trade, etc. cetera. Um, your plan to wait for the setup to happen. The plan in motion only based on predetermined conditions. Okay, now the most important part of the course, self-coaching. Oh, what? I don't have to pay someone to tell me where I'm wrong? What? Yep, self-coaching, self-improvement, and journaling. So take your notes out. Self-coaching is actually doable and realistic, and you could do self-improvement on your own. You don't need a coach to do that, okay? I would love to take your money and coach you on that, but there's no need because you could do it. I'm going to tell you some easy steps where how you can improve your trading. It's going to blow your mind. 
the trading day starts before the market open and ends before the market closes. That's true. Make sure you're aware of the market conditions before you start trading. Decide what to trade, decide the parameters, and after you exit the trade, that's when the work starts because you have completed the cycle. Now, how to self-coach and how to self-improve. Number one, you're gonna print two charts of the symbol that you have traded. If you're a stock trader, futures trader, I don't care what trader you are, day trader or swing trader. If you're a swing trader, this can probably take two to three days until you're out of the trade. But on chart number one, you print these two charts, print them out, print them out. Printers are cheap. Okay. I know ink is not cheap, but printers are cheap. Trust me. It's worth it. On chart number one, print on, on chart number one, notate notate mark down the area where you entered the trade the stop that you use for the trade the risk that you use the position that you use for the trade and where you have exited the trade be very realistic with yourself just mark everything that you've done i enter here i put my stop here this is what i got out on the second sheet on the second sheet write down what you should have traded Okay, what you should have traded. And you were gonna say, hey, I should have entered here. This is a two minute high low. So I should have had an earlier entry and not wait for the breakout. I should have had my stop here. I should have trailed instead of being out here, maybe I should have stayed in and trailed by pivots because I had confirmation that this uh, stock or index or whatever it is, or ETF was going towards the gap fill. Okay, so make notations. This is self-coaching. So once again, chart number one, your entry stop target and exactly what you did and target uh, and chart number two, you're gonna write down what you shoulda, coulda, woulda. Okay, and this is how you progress. You compare the two charts. So in the next trading session, you're not gonna repeat those mistakes. And in the next session, you do the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. Uh, journaling. Journaling, we only have like two more minutes left. Journal increases your trading consistency, detects your errors that you've made in previous trades, shows you where your mistakes were. Maybe you want to adapt gap trading, or maybe you want to adapt in stocks, or maybe you want to adapt a different strategy. Make sure that you mark down, and I'm going to show you an example. You mark down and you say under comments, hey, this is a gap trade. I traded at this time. So at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter, when you go through your trades, you're gonna say like, man, I really suck at gaps. So cut the gaps out. You don't need to trade gaps, just trade continuation trades. Journal keeps you accountable. Journal helps you improve your trading techniques. It shows what strategies work and what strategies do not work. This is an example, and by the way, uh, ever since I have been a retail trader, so for over 17 years, I have been journaling and I have journals uh, from 17 years ago, okay? It doesn't have to be a, a, a software. You could do an Excel sheet. You could do a Google sheet. You have to make sure that you indicate the date, the instrument, the direction, the entry, the stop, the targets, that you have the exit price, the percentage gain, or whether you want to use it in R's, then you have to have entry price at minus exit price and the risk price. You have to have another column. Uh, and also updates. I have updates and trails because I don't need to improve my method right now, but you can have here detailed explanation. I took this trade at 10 o'clock. It was part of a gap trade. I did this and that and whatever. I used this strategy. So at the end of the month, when you draw the line and say, hey, I would have done so much better if I hadn't traded gaps or if I hadn't traded that strategy, okay? So uh, for me, I think the time is out. And um, I'm, I just want to mention that we do have the Power Income Futures, uh, futures course that is uh, starting uh, actually on the tw uh, September 28th, the last week of September. Uh, I teach an institutional grade trading system. For, uh, this is uh, specific for futures, uh, the upcoming course that we have. This is the most powerful day trading chart pattern. And uh, we're, we teach you how to exploit uh, day trading chart patterns for above average gains. You can check out our portfolio. It's under the trading room tab on our website. 
Uh, we teach you the six, six major disciplines of every single trade, the entry to stop, the target, trade management, position sizing, and trailing, uh, how to calculate it with mathematical precision. We teach you the market tempo, how to maximize your timing using key moving averages and other powerful indicators that are free on your chart. And we're going to teach you that price action is king. Uh, how to maximize your gains and minimize your losses using proper money management techniques. We do have the trading plan that we're giving it to you. You're going to get to trade with me, which is an 100% hand holding system. So not only that, I teach you how to fish, but I pull the fish out of the water, I cook it for you, and I serve it to you on a server plate. So what that means is that I am spoon feeding you the trade so your brain can retain only the winning trades and only how to trade the right way. It's all about structure and it's all about, um, it's all about consistency.